icon living. Start a record label miss. Okay guys, this is going to be the H3 Hummer Angry Grill how-to video. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to change your stock grill to have an, give it like an angry look by just adding some more material to it to cover up part of the headlight. Um, I've had a million requests to do this video, so I uh, finally got the opportunity to do it. I had one of them on my Hummer here and ended up selling it just so I could buy a new one and do this video for you guys. Um, it's probably gonna be a few day process. There's a lot of sanding and stuff involved, but I'm gonna try to compile it all into one video for you and try to make it as easy as possible. I know there's probably a hundred different ways to do this, but this is the way that I find easiest and it's really strong. Haven't had it break or crack or anything yet. Um, I've done, is either two or three grills like this so far and no issues so uh yeah it's a very very easy and strong way to do it by the end of it the angry part of the grill should be stronger than the plastic itself if you do have a grill that does have the chrome on it you will have to get it to this stage before you can get any farther you can go ahead and you know try to do it with the chrome on your grill but from experience, it doesn't work out. The chrome doesn't allow anything to bond to it, uh, especially paint. You can't even, you know, sand it down enough to get that stuff to bond. It's just, it's it's a surface that nothing likes to bond to. Um, so do what you have to. I've tried chemicals to remove the chrome, um, but nothing worked except for just scraping it all off with a knife. That's how I did my original one. If someone can find a better solution for getting the chrome off, then that's awesome, but so far the best thing that's worked is grab a razor blade, have some patience, and just, you know, get after it until all that chrome is off of there. But if you want to do it the easier way, it's a little bit more expensive, but you just buy a brand new one like this. I'll get started uh, showing you guys how to, how to prep this, get it ready for everything that you'll need to do. Um, the first thing is... The area that you're gonna be putting the wood on, you will need to rough it up a little bit. So right around here, I had to take some sandpaper and you know, just hit the inside of this, come along here, get the outside, just scuff all this up because what you're gonna be doing is gluing in a piece of wood using plastic epoxy. And that gives a really good surface for this to bond to. It gives it some texture. And then also the Bondo that's gonna be, you know, coming over everything needs to have some sort of texture to bond to as well. And this really smooth plastic stuff will bond to it, but it'll end up cracking and coming off eventually. So you want kind of a rougher surface for that Bondo to grab to. So what I just do is take some sandpaper, rough up this whole area here. And then uh, once you get your template or your cutout, you can rough it up a little bit more exactly to where you're gonna have it cut out. But that's just a good way to get started and uh, do that to both sides. And then as far as the template goes, you can use, you can do this many different ways. I've seen people that have painted their headlights and I don't know, some people like to make the angry look from here to here or from here all the way to the corner. I find what I think looks best is going from right about here and taking it across to like this point right here. It doesn't give it such an angry, crazy look. It just kind of gives it like a, like a pissed off look to it. And it, you know, it doesn't go covering like half your headlight if you went like here. It, it covers up the top of it, but it doesn't like, it doesn't cover the bulb or the light output at all it doesn't really affect it when you just do a nice simple angle across like that so that's the type of look i'm going to be going for and i start off with a piece of cardboard like this you can see i've already kind of drawn my template here so what i did is i stuck this right in here just like that and i went around with a pen and traced the front of the grill around that 
and then what I'll do from here is cut out the angle and, uh, and get my template exactly the angry look that I want it. So I'll come back to that in just a minute. Okay, so I got my template here. As you can see, I got the angle just how I wanted it. Uh, it's not gonna be blocking out too much of the headlight, nothing like that. Uh, well, it's plenty of light through still. I kind of put it up to the, to the front of the Hummer and uh, checked it, made sure all that's good, and it, it looks good just how I want it. So from here, you're gonna take your template. This will be your template for both sides. You're gonna find a uh, piece of wood. What I did is I bought this at Lowe's. It's a three quarter inch piece of birch ply. And uh, I think a full sheet of this is like 50 something dollars, which I bought a full sheet, but you can definitely buy half a sheet if you're using it only for this. I've used a sheet for many things like relay panels and other grill projects. So it works out good. It ends up lining up perfect with the edge here. I think this is probably just a little bit more than three quarters. So when you put this in there, it, it ends up working out great. So find your factory straight edge on your piece of wood because that's the straightest edge you'll have and that's the edge you want to line up your template with, just like that. You're going to trace out your template and then you will need a jigsaw like I have here. This is just my old crappy skill saw so let me get to cutting both templates out. Um, I'm going to cut out a piece for each side and then we will go from there. Okay, I got both of my pieces cut out now, and these are going to be directly glued into the grill and be the base for the entire thing itself. So, um, if you have a router with a flush cut bit um, to perfectly copy each other, you can use that. I have one, but I didn't use it. it takes a while to break it all out, so just use my jigsaw for both of these. Um, if you're having trouble, Cutting around where, I think this one's like that. Cutting around where they bend. You can do some relief cuts like that just to get it to cut around there. And a jigsaw is not perfect. You're gonna have, you can see that, you're gonna have some waves in the wood and stuff like that. But with all of the fiberglass filler, um, we're not gonna have any issues with that. It's all gonna be smoothed perfectly over and uh, shouldn't be an issue at all. So if they're not perfect cuts, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. And uh, the wood's gonna be completely covered in fiberglass filler, Bondo, um, or just body filler, and uh, fiberglass resin itself. So none of the wood is actually going to be exposed. Uh, that way, you know, if you're driving and it's raining and your grill's getting water on it, this wood isn't gonna absorb water and swell up and crack and cause all sorts of issues. So. Now we have to trim these down so that they will actually fit in here. The thing is, they almost fit, but they won't go in because this is at a slight angle inwards. So the back of this is actually a smaller distance than the front of it. So what we have to do now is cut kind of like a divot going down going down this wood right here. So we have to take some material off the back of this all the way down. And the first time I tried sanding it, but it takes way too long. So what I found is the easiest solution is to just flip it over, clamp it down to your other piece of wood and use the jigsaw. Have the blade kind of at an angle like this and just take down some material like that. Cut that edge off of there. And if you cut that edge off all the way around this piece, it will slide right in. So that's what I'm gonna do next. This cut doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, you can go get a, a chamfer bit for a router and, and do this uh, if you wanna spend $40 on a bit. Be my guest, but I'm gonna do it the easy way. So let me cut the edges off of this and this guy, get them to fit and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here we are with the two pieces glued in. They're in place now and they are permanent. 
those things will never come out. Um, if I were to hit that right now, I'd probably have a better chance of punching out a piece of plastic than knocking that out. What I used to get those in there is this plastic bonder epoxy. It's a two part. So all you have to do is cut the tips off, you know, squeeze both sides together, uh, stir it for a good 20 seconds, and then fill a 55 gallon drum with gasoline. Then once you have it all stirred, you'll go and put it around the piece of wood, wherever it's gonna be in contact with the grill. And that's why we sand all this area right here is to give that epoxy a good surface to bond to. It's not gonna be you know, super smooth and that epoxy won't break off. It's actually in the pores of the plastic now. And that epoxy is super strong and potent and I'm pretty sure these will never come out. So don't worry about the angle that you had to cut off to get in here. It's ugly on the backside now. And even though you'll never see it, we're still gonna fill this with fiberglass filler and just make it extra strong, smooth it out, make sure it's done the right way. You can see that over there. Looks pretty ugly, but that's what you have to do to get it to sit in there. And on the front, you'd never even know that we had to make those cuts on the back. What you do wanna make sure of is when you place this in here and you have to use uh, some sort of clamp. Let me see, these are the clamps that I use. Just some DeWalt hand clamps. Um, I clamped this piece to the grill like that and let it dry for a good 20 minutes before I took them off. You can already see that the epoxy is like starting to take form to the plastic itself and I'm pushing on that real good. Push it, push it real good. It's not moving. So make sure that when you put the wood in there, it's just a little bit below the surface of the grill. You don't want the wood to stick up past the grill because uh, this is where we use our fiberglass filler and Bondo to actually get the curvature over the piece of wood. You don't want the actual wood itself to stick over it. So that's okay that you have this little gap here. It's all gonna be filled over. And same with this side. So our next step is to break out the fiberglass filler. Uh, I'll show you guys what I use. I bought this stuff from Evercoat. Let me see if I can get the right one. Here we go. Okay, so I got this off Amazon. It's probably 20 bucks. It's Evercoat Everglass, so it's short strand fiberglass reinforced body filler. If you're familiar with body fillers, uh, you know exactly what this is. If not, this is basically body filler, but it's also uh, pieces of fiberglass broken up and mixed in with it, and it's for filling bigger gaps. So body filler is for you know little divots and tiny uh, smoothing out imperfections and stuff like that. This stuff is for you know getting big areas like this to match up, and also for filling in the gaps between the grill and our piece of wood back here. So that's where we're gonna use this. It comes with the hardener, um, and I will show you guys how to mix that up and use it on this portion. So let me get that set up and we'll get started on that. All right, here we're starting off with the Everglass or the fiberglass filler. And uh, I just put a decent amount basically what I thought I would need onto my scrap piece of wood. Uh, it's just a smooth sur surface to work off of. And uh, the little hardener here, I just do basically just a good line, a cr like the same diameter as the, the amount of uh, glass filler that I got. So it, it may be a little bit too much hardener, but that just allows it to dry quicker. And what you're gonna do from here is just mix it all up until it's one color. It'll start to turn more blue, just like the hardener, as you mix it all in. So you're just gonna sit here and form this, just like this, until it is all one color. 
I'm sure some people know how to do this and are probably even better than me, but for those of you that have never done body work in their lives, it's not that hard. It's a little bit intimidating at first, but it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna mix this up and apply it in these gaps right here on the back side just to fill all this in. And I will come back once we have all that done.